Hello, friends. Uh, let's do a Saturday Reads, where um, I've finished my shopping list for tomorrow. I've gotten into getting up as early as I can on Sunday morning, which is my the first day of my weekend, and uh, going off and doing grocery shopping. Very first thing, which is like, ah, A, there's not very many people around, which is always a bonus. And B, if I get it, I get it done. I come home, I have breakfast, and it's like I've had, I have a whole day versus what I was doing before, which was getting up, reading, having breakfast, kind of getting a list together, and then finally, by the time I'd actually gotten through groceries and everything like that, the entire first day of my two-day weekend was over, and uh, I was rushing headlong into the rest of my uh, basically break right back into work again. So yes, that is good. Another thing maybe I can get into is to try and do a Saturday Reads. I don't know if I'll do it every weekend, week, because I just I just cannot uh, read that fast, and I, it would just be a repetition. But that said, um, let's get let's get to it. So I am continuing my my love affair with. Oh, let me unplug something right now while I'm thinking about it. I'm c continuing my love affair with my Umidigi G1 tab. That is my my extremely, extremely cheap uh, tablet that I am using for uh, reading comics. Uh, I still am reading comics. Uh, I've been reading uh, Animal Man. Uh, I finished uh, the An Grant Morrison's run of the of Animal Man, kind of uh, radical uh, vegetarian. Uh, this is like written in like nineteen, I think at the eighties, late eighties. Uh, with it's got it's had uh, unfortunately by the end of it, it had a dip very much into sort of multiverse meta stuff, which probably maybe at the time, probably charitably at the time was, wow, this is mind bending stuff. And now kind of seems like it's kind of overworked, but yeah, there's just like, and Grant Morrison definitely is somebody who never found a really bizarre idea that he didn't want to find out, go up with at a certain point, I think animal man and a fellow take heavy drugs on top of a Mesa and are, yeah, have visions. Uh, we get uh, Boana Man, uh, the white god of Kilimanjaro, which, to uh, <laughs> Grant Morrison's credit, we he quickly just demolishes and uh, sets sets aside the uh, white character as the white god of Kilimanjaro. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, uh, very, I, I don't know, just like how the, how um, the, uh, is it, it's, it's Tom... This this is actually these are guest guest these these are guest artists on, in this particular page. The Martian Manhunter has come for a visit, but that to me, like especially the uh, woman there, uh, that is very much kind of James uh, John Byrne ish kind of uh, the how women were 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 represented there. Not the most egregious uh, representation of women, um, though. Funnily enough, um, I have to say. That I, the most the big thing I am using this tablet for is uh, in the at, at lunchtime, I'm using it to uh, just read read on my Kindle app. Uh, I'm finding it very good for uh, as I'm reading Barbara Tuckman's the proud the proud tower, a portrait of the world before uh, the war, 1880 to 1914. Which oh, when I found out that Barbara Tuckman had was writing about this particular era because ah. Uh, I'm doing this project about 1901, which is 1890 to 1910. I was like, ah, <laughs> I was so happy when I found out that uh, Tuckman was, had written a book about this era. Now it's a bunch of kind of, it is, it is actually, it works perfectly for me because it is not like one long flowing continuous narrative. It's here's a portrait of this uh, the patricians I've got, I've done uh, the patricians, kind of the ruling uh, aristocratic cast cast in uh, England. Um, we've gotten uh, the the anarchists of, of the time, the amount of assassinations, the amount of political turmoil that was happening at that time, all this pent up energy. Um, and uh, the Dreyfus Affair, which is what I've just finished reading, which, um, you know, I was talking about the Dreyfus Affair uh, with Alphonse Bertillon, but wow, wow, just the... Um, uh, it's it's the Dreyfus affair. I think makes like the political turmoil of like the United States in the '60s look like pocket change. Uh, truly, truly, just like holy cow, holy cow. Uh, 
just the, the the craziness, the madness, that cultural divide, the cultural wars we have today. Uh, I can see something like the Dreyfus Affair is is not a bad place to look. And I'm indeed, I'm going to pick up a book by Ruth Harris that is going to talk about uh, the Dreyfus Affair um, in particular as a whole book. Uh, later on, I will pick that up. Definitely a part of my 1901 project. But yeah, while I'm reading this, uh, I'm finding... Uh, the tablet is really great for doing research. I have, I'm, I'm web searching, go, bopping off on different names and kind of uh, bookmarking their uh, Wikipedia thing, Wip, Wikipedia articles on them. A lot of writers, a lot of really fascination, fascinating politicians. Tuckman, this book was written in like 1965, but Tuckman is so good at making um, just little pocket portraits of each uh, of of people that she decides to kind of focus her story on. It just makes them sound so damn interesting, which, you know, that is the mark of a really great writer and a really great uh, kind of you know, popular, popular historian. Um, uh, the other thing that I'd been, the other thing that I, that I read that re fairly recently is Say Nothing by, um, by uh, Patrick Radden Keefe. Uh, this is actually a, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone else has heard of this book. I learned about this book because I was watching John Oliver on Hot Ones, the YouTube thing, where uh, you, uh, you're you promoting something, so you come in and you have to eat have to t eat chicken wings with increasingly hot, uh, hot sauces. Um, and, you know, putting yourself in medical jeopardy to to promote whatever you're doing. He's he's promoting his his TV show, uh, which, you know, is, is, is a really good TV show. Um, um, but uh, at the very end, he said, oh, can I plug something else? And he mentioned this book, Say Nothing. So I went, oh, OK, I'll 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 take a look. I'll t I'll I'll um, download a sample from Kindle. And holy cow, uh, this is a uh, it's using the disappearance of a mother of 10 uh, Irish uh, North uh, Northern Irish woman, uh, Jean McConnell, Mick Conville. Uh, in 1972, she was disappeared, as in she was taken away by the IRA and was never seen again. And she he uses that to tell the story of uh, the IRA um, kind of coming up to the present era and just the idea of, you know, how we're going to remember, how is going to remember things, how people are uh, telling the story of this, uh, especially uh, the stuff on Jerry Adams, the uh, leader of Sinn Féin, um, also leader on the IRA, despite how much he probably seems to protest against that idea. I just like, this is really well told. I don't know if it's, you know, I know very little about the, uh, about the Irish troubles. Um, but this was such a gripping story. It was told so well, kind of bouncing back and forth from different, different perspectives. Um, you know, with Gene McConnell, people kind of complain that this isn't a true crime book. It's not. It's a history book. It's a history of the troubles using her as this kind of avenue in, uh, but also kind of like grappling with, you know, the really nasty shit that was done uh, in 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 quest of uh, a, a um, in quest of goals by the IRA. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's just like, wow. This was so gripping. This was so gripping. So just pulled me right through. I can, you know, I am, I am someone who can be a wonk on stuff and just that will entertain me. This was like, kind of like thriller writing to me, at least maybe it's because I'm a wonk. It was a thriller writing to me, but yeah, that was, that was, that was really a pleasure. Uh, and then, yeah, finally, finally, I'm at the moment, I'm reading The Rover Boys at School, uh, which was published in 1899. So it falls within my 1901 project of reading stuff uh, in in that kind of in that kind of period by Arthur M. Winfield, which is a pseudonym for uh, Edward uh, Stratemeyer, who founded the Stratemeyer Syndicate who published all the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, Tom Swift, all those books with various ghostwriters. This is the very first one of them, which, so he actually wrote this. I think he actually did write, a, crank out a lot of these, a lot of these books himself, but he also had a huge stable of authors who he, um, he, uh, 
he he got he got to, he got to do it. So I'm actually quite enjoying. I'm reading this out loud because it's a project. Uh, it's you know I got it from Project Gutenberg. It's well out of copyright, so I can read it out loud to myself in like 10, 15 minute things. And uh, it's it's inter it's 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 uh, interesting. It's interesting. I have already done one of the books from the Stratemeyer Syndicate, the uh, X Bar X Boys at Thunder Canyon, which was a western. This is a school, a boys school uh, adventure, at least so far. And it is the very first one of these where I've seen uh, young boys. Uh, this is a Dick, Tom, and Sam Rover who are super thrilled that they're going to a mil military academy. Uh, so that is in itself sort of shows you maybe t times have changed a bit. It's like, oh boy, we're getting sent to a military academy. And they're thrilled with that because we're boys and we want to be active and, and stuff like that. So they're, it's... Uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, you, I can see why these books were, 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 were enjoyed at the time. So yeah, that's my, that is my Saturday reads for March the 2nd, 2024. Uh, I don't know, what are you up to? Uh, are you reading, uh, uh, ancient, ancient, um, uh, children's literature? <laughs> are you reading history? Um, oh, I'm also listening to Erasure by, uh, I, I keep on forgetting this because I keep on putting it down and then not picking it up again. I'm also reading uh, Erasure by uh, Everett, Percival Everett, um, which is, uh, get turned into American fiction, uh, a now Academy Award nominated uh, film uh, starring Jeffrey Wright. And uh, I'm really, I'm enjoying that too, but I keep on putting it down and then I need meaning to pick it up again. I don't know if that's the audiobook format or if I just kind of, I, I had a long stretch where I was listening to a lot of audio and now I seem to have gotten out of that. I'm still listening to like podcasts and things like that. So it's not like I'm not listening to stuff anymore, but uh, for some reason I'm, I, uh, that maybe that muscle needs to get exercised again. I'll have to, I'll have to see how that goes, whether I need to uh, put down the audio and pick up a, a book of it. Uh, even though it's not like, uh, sometimes you get literary fiction and it's like, Oh, okay. This is, language and I need to sort of sit down and I uh, sit down and uh you know read this carefully sometimes people actually have more of a conversational tone this seems like a little bit more you know it's very precise it's, it's, it's very much voice but it is uh uh it, it's it's not over flowery over flowery literary bullshit as you sometimes get um so yeah I'm 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 enjoying that as well all right all right I'm gonna stop there I just natter natter on and I try not to the thing that I do not like about Saturday reads for myself god I'm shutting my eyes now the thing I don't like about Saturday uh reads or Friday reads for myself is sometimes I feel like oh I've talked all about the book now I don't feel like I can actually just sort of sit and make a video about the book uh later if I want to I'm gonna have to see how that goes if that this this feels like it spoils it for me, or uh, if this is just like, okay, I, I noted very quickly what I was going to talk about. I mean, I don't think I'm going to do a review of Say Nothing or anything other than what I've just said there, because I'm not an expert in the in 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 uh, Ireland, and I'll just put my foot in it. Um, yeah, yeah, the Rover Boys is is fun, but it's it's ephemera. Uh, I'll probably I'll just give you an update uh, the next time I check in. So yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, God, there's just so much in. There's so much. I feel like I feel like uh, the Proud Tower is just going to be kind of one of these, uh, um, f these kind of basis books that I'm going to launch a lot more of my 1901 reading, 1901 project reading on. Um, so yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I hope your reading this weekend is going well. Um, I will be able to get to my reading tomorrow. Now I've got to have lunch and get to work. More videos later.